This episode is graciously sponsored by NordVPN. Bored staying in? Get NordVPN. And next time you're all dressed up with nowhere to go and you think about rewatching that same series for the fifth time, stop and open your life to new possibilities. Diversify your streaming portfolio with access to almost any country's streaming contracts. NordVPN allows you to safely and securely route your IP address through almost any country, so geographical limitations are a thing of the past. Sick of what the American Netflix has to offer? Switch it up. Be British for a day. In the UK version of Netflix, you can enjoy the beloved US version of The Office. Something us Americans lost access to when the world was falling apart, and we never forgot it. It's a win-win-win. I win because I get to watch The Office. You win because you aren't being tracked. And we all win because NordVPN currently has a special offer for our viewers. Right now, you can go to nordvpn.com slash Merck or use coupon code Merck to get a two-year plan plus a bonus gift with a huge discount. Sherry Christine Saunders was a 67-year-old woman who lived in Norfolk, Virginia. On August 4, 2018, she left her home to visit her family in Monroeville, Alabama. It was a 12- to 13-hour drive from Norfolk to Monroeville, and she expected to reach her destination on August 5th. However, Sherry never arrived. She was reported missing to the police, who launched an extensive search for her. Multiple law enforcement agencies, with the help of volunteers, helicopters, and cadaver dogs, searched for her for the next few days, but to no avail. Then, nine days later, on August 13th, Sherry's car, a 2010 red Toyota Corolla, was found abandoned on a remote dirt road off of Cannon Church Road in Conecuh County, Alabama, a few miles north of the Flomaton exit on I-65 and Highway 113. Sherry was last seen on a CCTV camera at a gas station off of Exit 93 off of I-95 in Evergreen, Alabama on August 5th at around 1 a.m. Sherry entered into the gas station at around 1.08 a.m. and left the gas station shortly after. She'd used her credit card at the station and it would be the last activity on that credit card. Her phone last pinged at around 3.36 a.m. off of a cell tower located behind Yellowhammer Travel Center off of Highway 113. There would be no more activity on her phone after that. Police searched her car but could not find any of her personal belongings that she was carrying with her. Her belongings included her phone, a tablet, a GPS device, and a 12-pack of Corona beer and snacks. Sherry had made that trip to Monroeville four times before, so she knew the route pretty well. Her family stated that she last called them on August 4th at 5.44 a.m. when she was 20 miles east of Columbia, South Carolina. They said that she was supposed to call again after exiting I-65 at Evergreen's Exit 93, as she usually did, but she never called them on that day. Despite massive searches by the police, no sign of Sherry could be found. Then, two years later, on December 6, 2020, skeletal remains would be found in Escambia County, Alabama. Four months later, the skeletal remains were positively identified as belonging to Sherry Christine Saunders. She was a victim of homicide. Police have not reported any suspects nor a motive in this woman's death. The case is open and the investigation is still ongoing. Carrie Grace Jones was a 46-year-old mother of two adult children living in Jacksonville, Florida in 2016. Carrie was legally deaf and wore hearing aids, however, she could still talk verbally and communicate with others. She had recently moved to Jacksonville from Pell City, Alabama to be with her boyfriend, Jackie Kelly, whom she had met online. They lived in an apartment on the 12,300 block of Mandarin Road. On February 9, 2016, Jackie reported Carrie missing to the police. Carrie was last seen at her home on February 7, 2016. Jackie initially told police that Carrie had gotten upset with him over something that he had posted on Facebook and that she had left the apartment in anger. 
However, a week later, he told police that Carrie had actually gotten into a physical fight with him and that she had knocked him unconscious with a coffee cup. He said he woke up the next day to find Carrie was gone. Jackie reported her missing two days later after a co-worker of Carrie called him asking why she had not shown up for work. Carrie worked at BL's as a cashier. Carrie's 1996 tan Toyota Avalon with an Alabama license plate was found parked at her workplace in BL's parking lot. A CCTV camera showed the car leaving the store parking lot at 2.30 p.m. on February 7th. A few hours later, the car was seen again entering the store's parking lot at around 6.45 p.m. Five minutes later, a person riding a bicycle was seen cycling away from the area that her car was parked, but it is unclear if the cyclist was involved. When the car was found, the driver's seat was pushed back, and as Carrie had a short stature, it is believed that the car had been driven by someone taller than Carrie. Her car was reportedly not processed for evidence and was returned to her son shortly after. Her son drove the car back to Alabama, and it was only after a week that police decided to actually search the car for evidence. However, by that point, her family had already used the car, contaminating any evidence which may have been found. A co-worker of Carrie's reported to have received a phone call from a woman claiming to be Carrie, calling out for her shift on Sunday. The co-worker said that Carrie didn't have a shift on Sunday and was certain that it was not Carrie who had been on the line. Jackie has since refused to talk to Carrie's son and has hired a lawyer. Jackie is not considered a suspect in Carrie's disappearance. Carrie's family does not believe she would have left of her own accord as she was family oriented and loved her two sons and her grandchildren. Her case remains open and unsolved. In 1976, 73-year-old John Waitley lived with his 68-year-old wife, Faye Waitley, at Hills Prairie, six miles south of Bastrop, Texas. John and Faye had been married for four years and had few close friends and no known enemies. The couple was quite wealthy, but kept to themselves and did not flaunt their financial status. On January 30th, 1976, the couple was supposed to attend Faye's granddaughter's wedding in Houston, but they never arrived. Concerned, the family asked Bastrop County Sheriff's Office to do a wellness check on the couple's 1,500-acre ranch in Hills Prairie. On the 31st of January, at around 10.30 p.m., the police visited the couple's ranch, but they found it abandoned. The couple's three vehicles, two Mercedes-Benzes and a Jeep, were parked in the garage and their dogs were running around loose. The police officer then went inside to investigate the residence and soon found a bullet hole that had gone through the bedroom's open window and through the closed shade. While another bullet mark was found on the concrete interior of the window, seemingly from a different trajectory. The bullet hole was later determined to be from a 22 caliber bullet that had been fired from inside the home by a gun held at waist level height. The window shade had been pulled down, which the Waitley's minister thought was odd as the couple hardly ever pulled their window shades down. How he knew this information is undetermined. John had owned two 22 caliber revolvers, and only one of them was found, fully loaded, inside the house, while the other remains missing to this day. The couple's personal belongings, including their eyeglasses, their wallets, and cash were all left behind in their home. Strangely, the couple's mahogany bedroom door had been removed from its hinges and was still missing. The police also noticed scratch marks on the front door of the residence, which they believed were caused by the bedroom door being taken out the front door. The police theorized that it is possible that the door was used to carry John and Faye, or their bodies, out of the residence. A door splinter and bullet fragments were found on the floor of the bedroom. The police also noticed that the floor had apparently been recently cleaned. The last confirmed sighting of Faye was on January 26th, while John's last confirmed sighting was on the evening of January 27th, when he had an argument with a contractor who was picking pecans on his ranch. 
the contractor stated that John appeared to be drunk. The police believe the couple went missing between the late evening hours of January 27th or the early morning hours of January 28th, as a newspaper dated the 27th of January was found opened inside the home while the newspaper dated January 28th was still in the mailbox. Later, hunters came forward and stated that they had seen a blue or green van or possibly a pickup truck speeding on the road towards the Waitley home. The vehicle was again spotted about an hour later, heading in the opposite direction. It was later found that John Waitley's son, Barney, from a previous marriage, who was 41 years old at the time, owned a green 1970s Ford van. Barney lived in Austin, Texas with his family, and he was in line to inherit half of John's estate after his death. Police questioned him, but Barney denied knowing anything about their disappearance and refused to take a polygraph test. It is unclear if Barney had anything to do with the Waitley disappearance, and Jimmy Nutt, the investigative officer at the time, believes someone else might be the cause of the couple's disappearance. It was found that the couple's relationship was rocky. During their searches of the property, police discovered a box inside a dry well containing legal documents. John had apparently filed for a divorce just 14 weeks after he married Faye. The box also contained Faye's countersuit, which alleged that she had been mistreated by John, and John had apparently handwritten the word lies next to the allegations. However, during their divorce hearing, the couple reconciled and decided to stay together. However, the marriage was still described to be a decidedly rocky one. Sheriff Jimmy Nutt believes that John killed Faye and moved to Mexico, which is where John was originally from. A year after their disappearance, the missing bedroom door would turn up inside of a loft of a barn, which had previously been searched multiple times. It is unknown if the door was missed during the previous searches, or if it had been placed there after the searches. In 1984, the serial killer Henry Lee Lucas would confess to murdering John and Faye Waitley. He told investigators that he and his accomplice had stabbed John and Faye to death and dumped their bodies in the Nevada desert. While police at the time found Henry's confession to be credible enough based on his description of how he murdered the couple and considered filing charges against him, they never did, because it turned out that Henry would confess to hundreds of murders that he did not commit, and there is no evidence to prove he was involved. The couple's remains were never found in subsequent searches of the Nevada desert. One theory was that the Waitleys were kidnapped for their wealth. However, as no ransom demand has been subsequently made, that theory does not hold water. Foul play is suspected in their disappearance, but there have been no updates in the case, and it remains unsolved. <laughs>